Would you pray with me, please? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. This is what we affirm in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. Adam Hamilton, the pastor who wrote the book that this sermon series is based on, said this about uh, the forgiveness of sins. This is so insightful. He says, Notice that the creed doesn't say, I believe that human beings are sinners, though that is assumed. It says, I believe in the forgiveness of sins. The emphasis in both the creed and the Christian faith is not guilt, but grace. It is not sin, but forgiveness. We all need forgiveness. The Apostle Paul reminds us that we all sin and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. He, of all people, understands what it means to be forgiven. The man who was first Saul, the persecutor of Christians who stood by and watched Stephen be stoned to death, and Jesus came to him personally, to Saul, the sinner, to offer him forgiveness and the possibility of a new life. Not an easy life, but a fulfilling life of serving Christ. A life of freedom in grace. And this life of freedom in grace is not just for people like Paul, but it's for all of us. But it begins with a response, a response to come to Christ with humility, to bring our sin to him, to lay it at his feet, at the foot of the cross, to recognize our sin, to name it, and to ask him for forgiveness. Only then can we be released from the power of sin. When we read stories like the Apostle Paul's, we're often inspired and moved what a gift to be forgiven. To know forgiveness is to know freedom. And wouldn't it be incredible if everyone could experience this freedom? And indeed, forgiveness extends beyond our own need for forgiveness. It extends to the relationships we have with others as well. In the Gospels, Jesus calls the disciples to forgive one another and to forgive their neighbors. Indeed, he tells them 70 times seven is how often we should forgive. But we know that forgiveness doesn't come naturally to human beings. While we're grateful that God has forgiven us, we find it a lot harder to practice forgiveness in our relationships with others. Often we think, if I forgive this person, I'm saying that it's okay what they did. Or we think about the fact that they deserve punishment for the things that they've done to us. But the truth is, and we've all heard this saying before, that refusing to forgive, holding a grudge, is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. The great Christian writer C.S. Lewis once wrote, to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. When we forgive, we're extending the grace of God to another. The grace of God that does not discriminate between sins. The grace of God that covers every sin. When we forgive, we're not forgetting what happened. Instead, we are releasing releasing ourselves and the other person from the power, the imprisonment of resentment and anger and bitterness, all things that are not fruits of the Spirit. When we forgive, we are releasing ourselves and the other person, allowing God to do the redeeming work, the redeeming work in the other person and in ourselves. But forgiveness is a choice. It's not an easy one. The other day I was listening to a podcast about two men who unbelievably became friends and even surrogate brothers uh, because of forgiveness. One was named Gary Wright 
and the other was named David Kaczynski. You may recognize the last name Kaczynski. David is the brother of Ted Kaczynski, who was named, who was called the Unabomber. Gary Wright was one of the Unabomber's victims. David Kaczynski felt compelled to call all of his brother's victims or the family members of his victims to apologize on behalf of his family. One day he called Gary Wright and he didn't get in touch with him, but he left a message and he didn't expect Gary to return his call. So he was very surprised when a few days later, Gary called him. David went into an apology on behalf of his family uh, to David, I'm sorry, to Gary. And he said, I just want to tell you how very sorry I am for what my brother did to you. And Gary remarkably replied, you have no reason to apologize. If you ever need anyone to talk to, I'm here for you. David was so taken aback by this gesture of grace. Here was his brother's victim offering him a shoulder to cry on him. And so David took Gary up on his offer. And over the years, they developed a deep friendship. They even call themselves brothers. Years later, they lead conferences on the power of forgiveness. The podcast host ended with this. What would the world have lost if Gary had not forgiven David? What would Gary and David have lost? In his choice to forgive, Gary released himself and David from a life of resentment and anger and bitterness and instead released them both for the redeeming transforming, empowering work of God. This is the power of forgiveness. This is love. David ended the interview saying this, love doesn't look so powerful. It works in subtle ways. Its results aren't immediate, but it is the more powerful force in the world. The more we recognize that love is powerful and violence is weak, the more we have the chance to make this world a better place. Jesus knows all too well how to forgive. Imagine the pain he felt knowing that as he entered Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday, this excited crowd shouting Hosanna would turn on him in a matter of days. They would soon call for his death, shouting, crucify him. His disciples would deny him, abandon him, and betray him. He would be mocked, derided, and beaten in public, and hung up on a cross to suffer and die. And yet, on the cross he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Then he offered the greatest demonstration of grace, of forgiveness imaginable. He died for the sins of the world, defeating the power of sin and death, making new life possible for us all, making resurrection possible for us all. This was all made possible because of God's desire to give to the world forgiveness. Forgiveness for you, for me, and forgiveness for those who've wronged us. This is the power of the cross, that the things that separate us from God and from each other no longer control us. We now have a chance to be released from sin and anger and bitterness and resentment and step into a life of freedom in grace. What wondrous love is this. Amen.